This video is sponsored by Honey. We'll get to that later. Ah uh, yes, Kung Fu Panda, the movie that sweeped the nation. The world loved Kung Fu Panda and so did their producers. You know who else liked Kung Fu Panda though? Other movie executives. And they wanted money too. Why don't we get money for making a movie about fighting panda? That's a pro that's probably a conversation someone had. I mean, what's not to like about Kung Fu Panda? You've got Jack Black, who by the way, Nacho Libre got robbed at the 2007 Oscars, okay? I'm not over it. Something that I've noticed on my quest for terrible movies is that there is an abundance of Kung Fu Panda knockoffs. There's like more than seven, which I don't know if you know this, that's more than six. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at two of those knockoffs today, namely, the Prodigy and the Adventures of Panda Warrior. So join me! Let's experience pain at watching bad movies. The Prodigy, a movie in which all known laws of physics determined must not exist, and yet here we are. This movie is the only knockoff where the panda is not actually the main character, but rather a really strange and annoying supporting character. Let's read the synopsis to give you an idea of the film. An animated action comedy that follows the quest of a young panda girl named KG, the Kung Fu Girl. Okay, so there's already problems in the synopsis, so that's good. So they say panda girl, but she's definitely human and also kung fu girl you couldn't think of a name so you made her name an abbreviation of kung fu girl with the help of her brave yet zany master panda kg must rescue the handsome prince po and restore justice to her beautiful kingdom during her adventure kg learns that there is no limit to what she can accomplish if she believes in herself hell yeah the movie starts you off with a really strange yoga meditation music intro <laughs> And then it goes right into this theme song as if it's like a TV show and not an hour and 15 minute movie. The first scene is this training session where the master panda is training KG. And right off the bat, they start using dialogue recordings right after they're used, as if no one would notice. No. Like, did they not have enough money for the voice actor to say yeah more than once? It's a single word and also a single syllable. You are quite the prodigy. <laughs> I see what you did there. That's the name of the film. I'm a big fan of the animating of the panda's mouth. You learn faster than all of my students. It does not look like anything from my nightmares at all. It's really good. So the panda immediately mentions that her father would be proud of her. Your father would be very proud of you if he could only see you now. So he's dead, that's what that means. And I guess the panda promised him that he would take care of her after he died, which is all fine and good if this panda wasn't literally the only talking animal in this film. Besides the sassy troll, but we'll get to him later. And people are just letting it be the guardian of a child. So the panda tries to give KG an example of like a fight maneuver, but then he just injures himself. <laughs> which I guess was supposed to be like a funny moment. But this is the start of the most confusing aspect of what this panda serves in this film, which is simultaneously to be the witty and goofy character, but also the wise and knowledgeable one, which are two traits that are pretty much just completely at odds with each other. Like in Kung Fu Panda, Master Uguay sort of has his comedic moments, but he's primarily a wise character. All of his comedic bits just come from him being excessively old. Is something wrong? <sighs> This fucking panda will be being like an idiot at one moment and then suddenly spouting life lessons to KG. There are times when you need to release the tiger within. Mm -hmm. Basically what happens is that KG hears some guy strumming on a pipa, which is a Chinese guitar. When this character plays an instrument, his fingers move like they've never been used before until that moment. He is like a man baby learning motor skills for the first time. And then she starts playing the flute and they start having a musical flirting moment from like, like a mile away from each other. And then KG at the end of it is like, he's the one. Who could 
play so sweet a sound. Boom, bam, it's a prince. Ugh. What is this, Disney? What is this, the product of a transnational multimedia conglomerate? What the hell? Who, of course, is the first person in the film who has a name? And, of course, it's taken from Kung Fu Panda because it's Poe. Nice to meet you. I'm Poe. You know how love works. You meet someone for the first time and you're already in love. Come on. But, sh shoot. I'm a prince. They won't let me leave the palace. Prince Poe, where are you? I can't get a moment alone. They keep me under watch day and night. So then KG gets him to sneak out to a tavern with them. And then she makes this face when he says yes. Hmm. What is what what is that face? So the tavern scene happens, and the master panda decides it'd be a good idea to come along as a third wheel because he takes no social cues and in general is an absolute menace. For some reason, the tavern is like entirely dead. People are literally just sleeping there, which of course is a perfect opportunity for the master panda to do one of his uh, one-liners. Huh. Joy, joy, tavern. I don't see a heck of a lot of joy, joy going on around here. That's for sure. And also a perfect time to start a band. <laughs> One, two, three, four. It's an incredibly long musical scene. You've got repeated stock crowd noises. For some reason, KG starts doing disco moves from the 70s in ancient China. But of course, Prince Po's dad shows up, the Emperor. Prince Po, what on earth do you think you are doing? Bummer alert, guys. He's grounded. But then they meet up again the next day, and they like... <laughs> hey. Hey, you. They play tag. That's their date. They play tag. I'm gonna catch you. <laughs> Just a really weird chemistry between these two. It's odd. And then pretty much without any warning, a giant burly man comes out of nowhere, grabs Prince Poe, and jumps away at increments of 150 feet. Prince Poe! What? Then when KG tries to stop him from being kidnapped, she's stopped by Gwyneth Paltrow of all people. What? Well, this is getting interesting. They engage in a very intense battle scene, and by intense, I mean that they are literally just swinging at open air, just out of arm's reach of each other. <laughs> Then after about a minute of fighting, KG gets tired. <sighs> and then Gwyneth Paltrow just like pushes her over. <sighs> Which is a strange way to lose a fight if you've been training in Kung Fu your whole life and your name is also Kung Fu Girl. Let me just race through this next part. Basically, Master Panda comes out and he gives all of this backstory. Those people were the disciples of the Dragon King. Disciples of the Dragon King. And they're taking Prince Poe for ransom. They will hold them for ransom. And oh man, we we gotta get him back, man. We will restore Prince Poe to his palace. Oh, and oh shoot, I don't know if I can fight him though. Come on. How can I do anything to save him? Fucking dumbass, you gotta believe in yourself. Hello? KG, wait. Don't give up. That's pretty much what's said. Which leads into this very confusing musical number where she's sort of reminiscing about how she's sad that she lost this guy that she's known for 36 hours. But I'm just gonna let it speak for itself. Just as soon as you came in life and you were gone. What am I expected to say about this? Now I The person singing is like flat the whole time. I don't know if that was the intention. I think that she's singing the notes wrong. I will find them all. So the master panda found a purse off of Gwyneth Paltrow that she accidentally left behind. And then she comes back for it, which is confusing at first. Come outside, panda, and face me. Give me back my perfume, or you will surely regret taking my precious things. And then it turns out that she has a perfume that makes her like one and a half times larger, and then you can fight better, I guess. But before that, it just seems like this lady forgot her perfume after kidnapping someone and wanted it back. And then KG and the panda are like making fun of her. <laughs> I 
wouldn't want to be in your shoes. So then KG's got the perfume power now. She fights him, wins. And then they decide that they need to chase after Gwyneth Paltrow so they can figure out where the Dragon King lives. So do you know what they do to catch up? Well, there's a broken cart right there after the fight. So the most obvious thing to do is build a two-wheeled skateboard that doesn't have enough room for the master panda, so he drags along like a piece of trash at 40 miles per hour. Also, honorable mention for this editing choice right here. I did not change that at all. That is in the film. So they fall off a waterfall. And they find a portal to what I guess is a dimension where the Dragon King lives. And they portray it as like the most evil of all evil places. The dark castle of the Dragon King. It is excessively evil. And there's also ghosts. Nobody really explains the ghosts either. They're just kind of there. She asks her master if they're doing the right thing here. What did we get into? Are we doing the right thing out here? I don't really know why she would be conflicted about this because someone that she knows was kidnapped in front of her. Next up, they run into a troll, which by the way, turns out to be a sassy troll. And then the master says this. Watch out, he looks very mean and destructive. That's a very straightforward way to say that, but I, I mean, I agree. And all of a sudden the master decides to bust out his ability to use magic. Like he has superpowers. But in the fight scene before, he was using watermelon to get make people trip. You can't go from being a Tom and Jerry character to then fucking Vegeta. Which leads to this very strange scene. Hey man, sheesh. What's your problem, man? Gosh. What did I tell you? The troll's freaking sassy. Sheesh, I just woke up too. What a way to start your day. However, even though these people just assaulted him, he decides to help them find the Dragon King's castle because that's just what trolls do, man. Oh, sheesh, you must be very careful. I know the safest way, and I'll take you there. Now, Quiet Coyote, everyone, listening ears, what is next is quite an interesting development for this character, okay? I mean, pay attention to his posture here. He's a troll. He's a bit hunched over. That's okay. He's probably a gamer. But this is what he looks like in the next scene. What the fuck happened? This dude's got immaculate posture. And look at that neck, dude. That dude is eating Wheaties. So we get a scene of Gwyneth Paltrow trying to seduce Prince Poe by doing this fucking dance. Then she tries to spoon feed him love potion and then he literally refuses it like a baby with medicine, which is hilarious. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I won't eat your poison. I won't eat your poison, Gwyneth Paltrow. You play along with me, or I can be a royal pain. Damn. Okay, so this part's kind of convoluted, but um, okay, so KG and Master Panda enter the palace. They basically go through a jade room, a pearl room, a silver room, and then a gold room. And they're all just a bunch of moments where they activate a bunch of traps accidentally. They fight a bunch of ghosts that are shooting lasers. And the Master Panda activates like every single one of the traps because he's a dumbass. He's stupid. He's a, he's a stupid panda. That's what he is. But what is most ridiculous is when they enter the gold room and there is literally a giant stone statue in a T pose with a huge sign that says, beware he who utters these words, which is probably the most on the nose thing I have ever seen in a movie. Then of course the panda says it because he has a brain made of rocks and has no value to anyone. See here, it says, don't say Jing Yu Meng. So then they have to fight this giant golem and then they defeat it by pulling a cork out of its neck. And then KG, of course, is like, You never cease to amaze me. Completely ignores all of the mistakes that the master has made so far. Basically, the rest of the movie, you can pretty much guess. They get to the main room where the bad guy's at, and then KG has to fight them all. Here's a summary of what that viewing experience is like. The little pest has come for her prince. He's way out of your league, peasant girl. Well, he would never be with an old hag like you. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> so then the Dragon King's on fire, and then of course he accidentally sets on fire his conveniently placed stock of gunpowder because I guess he's stupid. And then they escape with the prince before the palace blows up. And then the prince is reunited with his father. Yay, everybody win. Thank you all for bringing my son back to me. And there will always be a special place for you in our kingdom. And of course, no movie of this quality would be nearly as good if they did not end the film with a dancing scene. What even is that dance? So yeah. That was The Prodigy. Before we move on to the next knockoff, this video is sponsored by Honey. Have you ever been online shopping and at checkout you scoured through Reddit posts and those sketchy websites to try to find a discount code that worked, but like 90% of the time they just didn't work? Honey gets rid of that entire process. Honey is the free online shopping tool that helps you find promo codes and adds them to your cart. Let's say you're shopping on some website like Old Navy. I'm choosing Old Navy because like half of my shirts are from Old Navy and I don't know why. So I'm buying a bunch of t-shirts on Old Navy, specifically this nacho problem t-shirt that I'm pretty excited about. When you check out, this little box drops down and all you have to do is just apply the coupons. And then it just scans the entire internet for promo codes. Right here, it's saving me around $20. And then bada bing, you save some money. Look at you go. It's pretty cool that Honey is sponsoring this video because this is literally a tool that I've already been using for like six months. It just finds discount codes that you just wouldn't have known about otherwise. Honey has saved its members over $2 billion in savings. And it supports over 30,000 stores online. There is literally no reason not to get Honey. It just saves you money. It's free, it installs in two clicks, and you can get it at joinhoney.com slash ted. That's right, baby, joinhoney.com slash ted. Thanks in advance for checking it out. It's actually a helpful tool, and thank you to Honey for sponsoring this video. The Adventures of Panda Warrior. What a film this is. It's good. This film is incredibly different from the previous Kung Fu Panda knockoff, and yet still definitely a Kung Fu Panda panda knockoff. They're getting smarter, you see. They're sneaky. They're little ninjas. I'd like to point out that this movie has a surprisingly high tier cast of voice actors. And there's a level of comedy and how that does literally nothing to prevent the film from being god awful. You've got Rob Snyder, who was on SNL in the 70s and has a host of some pretty popular movies. His IMDb list is huge. You've got Haley Duff, older sister of Hilary Duff, also known as Lizzie McGuire. You've even got Tom Kenny, the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. How did he get wrapped up in this? The movie starts in ancient China, which should be expected of any respectable Kung Fu Panda knockoff. In the time of the warlords, battles rage. However, it very much so does not stay that way, like at all. One of the first things that you notice about the animation quality of this film, it's almost too smooth. I think that the way that they animated a lot of this was that they had people in tracking suits moving around. There's just some sort of uncanny valley watching the way that they move around. Essentially, we've got this main character who's a human named Patrick. Also, Patrick? in ancient China. There's a whole lot of war going on and Patrick isn't really into that, but he's enlisted in the army and he's basically getting the shit kicked out of him. Captain, sir. No, I, I wasn't really sleeping. I was just closing my eyes so that I could gain more insight. <laughs> <laughs> So he starts arguing that people should be able to live peacefully to the general of the army. Uh, why must we fight each other? If we can live together in harmony, then there's no reason to fight. We can live in peace. Not true. There is no peace here. Peace doesn't exist. The world as we know it is hard. Yeah. 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 You're wrong. Yeah. There is a place without any war. A peaceful place where people live in harmony. And it's called Maryland. Maryland? Merry land. I'm surprised that they just didn't kill him on the spot. That is the stupidest name for a place I have ever heard. That's like a guy in the military arguing to his peers that Candyland exists. Are you kidding me? And later on, he's just talking about how like Maryland is real and talking to his dead grandpa. And he's got this necklace that his grandpa gave him. Grandpa, I'll prove that. Maryland really does exist. And then they get ambushed by like an army of angry bulls. Hurry, man! No! The enemy is near! Get ready! 
so he runs away and then he falls off a cliff and then his necklace activates and then there's a talking pig because you guessed it he's in maryland baby essentially what happens is patrick is transported to maryland and in the process of doing that he is also turned into a panda do not ask me why he turned into a panda because I do not know. Maryland is probably the most ridiculous rendition of any reality I've ever seen. None of it makes sense. He's a little baby boy, so he's freaking out about how he's, oh, he's a panda now, and he's in this weird place. Ah, what a weird dream. Where'd I get these mittens? Ah, and what's with this black and white fursuit? Don't tell me I really turned into a panda. Get a grip, man. So then he starts talking to this supporting character named Peggy Skyflyer, who is the worst character that has ever been written. She is the worst. She's a pig, but look at this. Look at her ears. I don't even know if they are ears. There's no ear canal. They are literally like tendrils coming out of her head. Like, why would you design a character this way? It, it's horrendous. And they flop around like giant meaty triangles. It is distractingly off-putting. And to make matters worse, as if they could get any worse, is that the way that this pig flies is that she propels herself by fucking turning herself into a toot rocket. Okay. And hey. launch! Uh, Woo! Gross! That is so stinky! Like, I can just imagine in the writer's room, there's that one guy in the corner who's high, and he's just like, uh -huh. Guys, do you know what would be funny? Okay, so suddenly there's cats with shockingly good posture and also swords, and then they just start attacking him without any warning. So Fart Machine comes in and saves him. And then she gives him this whole thing about how the cats are being mind controlled by the evil master. And shit ain't doing as well in Maryland as stupid Patrick thought, because you know why? War. War never changes. Patrick decides to start following Peggy around because he's a scared little idiot, and they end up fighting a giant spider, which Peggy defeats with a fart. <laughs> Like, how many fart jokes are they gonna get out of this one character? Is that her thing? That she's rude and she farts? So the story of this movie is basically that Maryland is at war with this evil master. And it's Patrick's job to help save Maryland and put it back to normal. There's just so many various confusing parts to this story, and it's just so overly complicated. But I'm gonna try to do my best to make this make sense. But no promises. You. At one point they're making a fire and Peggy just whips out a lighter because they have them in Maryland. Hey! Wait, how'd you do that? <laughs> It's an invention called a lighter. So Tom Kenny comes in and he's playing like this warrior mantis. Sounds familiar, I know. And he attacks Patrick just pretty much out of nowhere. And then they have this whole argument about how the mantis thinks that his grandpa is a thief because he took the dragon necklace from Maryland. The dragon necklace. Where did you get that necklace? It was my grandfather's a family heirloom. Stop talking. That is Princess Angelica's necklace. Your grandfather stole it. And for some reason throughout the film, one of the only things that can get Patrick to actually fight well is when they diss his grandpa. <laughs> no one insults my grandpa. <laughs> so then they beat the mantis and they tie him up but then almost immediately untie him because patrick doesn't want him to think that he's a liar and that his grandpa is not a thief you mean you're releasing me you know nothing about my grandpa even though the mantis literally just attacked them so next up they arrive in the onion town that's filled with these things that are like onion dogs that make these weird crying bark sounds <laughs> And they're getting attacked by like an evil tree stump that shoots fire. And the only way that he's defeated is that Patrick is convinced that he dissed his grandpa. Hey, huh? he just said your grandpa's a fool. What? No one insults grandpa except grandma! <laughs> I sound insane talking about this film. This, so this, this sounds ridiculous. So then it turns out Mr. Tree Stump Man's under mind control and they want to get him out of it. And all of a sudden a fucking sentient ginseng root comes out of nowhere. Allow me to help you. Wow. Are you the legendary maestro ginseng? His name is Jimmy Ginseng, by the way. And he plays a song and cures the tree stump of the mind control. He 
just shows up and starts playing a song and everyone's just like, yeah, 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 that's normal. Next up, they have a fight against a giant muscular bull. And that's when the Furious Five, sh I mean, the, the, the Wonder Seven show up. Ted, who the hell are the Wonder Seven? I'm glad you asked me. Well, obviously they're the best fighters in Maryland. You've got a chicken a bunny rabbit, a hippopotamus, that later, for some reason, insists that he be referred to as a river horse. You're a hippo. Uh-uh. No, I'm not. I am a river horse. A fashionable goat, a mad scientist monkey, and my personal favorite, a beagle with nunchucks. We basically learn that these guys are in a resistance against the evil master, and they go to meet their leader, played by Norm MacDonald. And there's also a random old man turtle that has a human nose. Thought I'd mention that one. It goes into this whole part where the Norm MacDonald line explains like all of the lore in this universe. And we're like 40 minutes into the film. So I'm gonna do my best to summarize that real quick. Okay, hear me out. So there's like these two whales, right? And they're... <laughs> and they swim around a dragon ball and that's the the dragon ball of life right and um but then one of the whales went out of control and started destroying shit in Maryland but then it turns out that uh Patrick's grandpa was the prophesized panda warrior and he defeated the whale and turned it back to normal which is all fine and good but then the evil rat comes in but during the ceremony a despicable rat with a despicable plan snuck into Maryland from an evil parallel dimension a despicable rat with a despicable plan that is hands down my favorite line in the film why do we to add the fact that the rat is from an evil alternate dimension but then the rest of it just like gets out of control using his dark magic he merged hope and oh, himself into shit. one oh, declaring man. himself the evil master of all maryland transforming himself into a terrifying nine-headed snake oh uh, what a nine-headed snake for anyone to resist he destroyed everyone who disobeyed him and then he took princess angelica what? prison Who's most princess? of maryland citizens were bewitched and forced to form his phantom arm. Why are they all cats? So you can see how desperate every one of us are. I mean, yeah, I guess. That's a pretty fucked up situation. Holy shit. Like, you can't just throw all of that shit onto us this far into the movie. Okay, so the evil master is a nine-headed snake. You've got Princess Angelica, Grandpa Panda, evil rat. So Patrick wants to fight the bad guy, okay? Go figure, right? So then they put in these two training scenes where he's just freaking struggling. Struggle city. Struggle town, population Patrick. But then on the third scene, he just starts eating all of these bamboo projectiles that are part of his training. And the Lion King is like, you're freaking ready, man. Patrick, you truly are the chosen one. Really? That fast? Also, what portions of this training pertain to fighting a nine-headed snake? So he gets this giant leaf sword and it seems super symbolic and important to the story, but that's where they get you. The only time it comes into play again is in the final battle where he pulls it out and he immediately loses it. Hey! 18 eyes. I'm gonna give you a thousand teeth just one chance to give yourself up right now. Or I'm gonna... Okay, so Patrick and the Wonder Seven, they go off to fight the evil master, but lo and behold, they can't find his lair because it's in the sky. It is almost a fruitless effort to try to explain this film. So then the tree stump guy, who's a good guy now, he's like, we gotta talk to this purple raccoon I know. So Patrick and him go and talk to this freaky looking purple raccoon, right? And the raccoon gives him a rock that'll help him find the, the secret lair. And then they come back and everyone's been captured and put under mind control all of a sudden. There's also this weird moment where they find the goat on the ground, but then the tree guy starts beating the living shit out of the goat for a couple seconds. Seconds. I go, go, go. No, I wasn't scared. Are you all right? Everything okay? <laughs> Okay, so they find the castle of the evil master. Boom. But then they get attacked by mind-controlled Peggy Skyflyer, who now has throwing knives. And how do they defeat her? You guessed it. Probably not. Patrick kicks her in the ass, and she farts out of her eyeballs and passes out. This is gonna hurt me more than it hurts you! <laughs> Like, what the fuck? So they enter the lair, but then they get captured by their friends who are also mind controlled. And then they get brought to the muscular bull guy. But then all of a sudden this happens. Hmm. Are you trying to rebel? No, not rebel. Return. Huh? Wait, but I thought that you were bewitched. <laughs> well, you thought wrong, didn't you, Crusher? Let's get you back to your old self. Patrick, grab the bull by the horns. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so from what I can gather here, it appears that everything would lead us to believe up to this point that they were mind controlled, right? Even going to the length of having a full-fledged battle with one of their allies. However, it was a ruse. They were faking. Oh God, I don't know what's going on. And then fucking Jimmy Ginseng Root comes back out of the sky. How are you? And he turns the bull into a good guy. And now the bull guy's on their side and he gets them into the lair too. And then they find the princess person, right? And they're like, oh, we're going to save you from the uh, from the nine-headed snake. Oh, but oh boy, man, you're going to be pissed. It was a ruse again. Because it's the snake disguised as the princess. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Russia, the arts, why'd you sell us out? I wouldn't trick my own rescuers. Ah, ah, I'm the one who fooled you, sucker. Guys. What was what was that? Ah. I'm the one who fooled you, I don't know that character. It's a bug that comes in and says a line to imply that they've been fooled by him, but it doesn't explain who that character is, and he never shows up before or after in the film. It remains a mystery to me what that who that character was. So then they fight the nine-headed snake, right? It shoots out a different element in each head because I don't know. And also one of the mouse shoots arrows out of it because why not? And then the tree guy like blows himself up. Good riddance. We didn't need him anyways. Screw that guy, honestly. Okay, so they find the princess and then the bull guy walks through a lake of poison in order to get her. And then the mantis shows out and he's just tunneled an escape route. There might be over 20 characters in this film designed exclusively to fill plot holes. And it's very hard to keep track of them all. So at the end, there's a final battle between the Wonder Seven and Patrick the Panda and the evil snake master demon thing. Jimmy Ginseng comes back. You know the drill. He's playing the old tune. And I, I guess it weakens the snake. And then all of a sudden, all of the onion dogs come out and they like cry come on the fucking snake. And then probably the weirdest part of the film happens in these final moments. Now! Go, go, go! Fight the wind head! Shadow feet, fight the water head! Mantis, fight the ice head! Bobby Bunny, fight the fire head! Spinny, fight the electric head! Peggy, fight the poison head! Bruce, fight the spear head! Billy, fight the bewitching head! I'll take the main head! Where did that even come from? Why did it turn into an anime all of a sudden? And then they all attack at the same time, and then he gets defeated, and then the rat crawls out of the snake's mouth and like runs away, and so they win. But not without a dancing scene. This is hope. This is love. And then the movie ends, which begs the question, is Patrick just stuck there? Does he just never go home? He's trapped in a horrifically strange nightmare land where nothing makes sense and all of the people are rude. That's horrifying. I think that this movie is probably worse than The Prodigy in particular because there was more on the line for this movie than The Prodigy. It's definitely clear that the animation is done by more than four people and they had enough of a budget to get C, B, or even A-list voice actors in the case of Tom Kenny. So to come out with a movie that is just so incredibly confusing, has so many writing problems, and just looks so bad is so embarrassing. So those were Kung Fu Panda knockoffs. I hope you enjoyed them. I didn't. I had to watch each of those movies at least five times. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you like this video and if you want to tell me what you thought, comment below, baby. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, and keep it radical, my guy.